Sorry, sorry. The picture, the way it's drawn, just reminded me of the books we used to read as children. I read those fairy tales over and over, and they were so real to me. Rapunzel was my favourite. My brain is just full of it. I mean, you're using colour. And the glaciers. I worked there some weekends, and someone had a part-time job there too. That was Eric's generosity. He was always good at helping out other people's children. Simon was quiet, more thoughtful than the other boys. Even then, he had a sense of craftsmanship. Wasn't always rushing stuff. Boys that age are just running around like headless chickens most of the time. Yeah. Plus, he had that look. He looked like a fairy tale prince from one of my books. He was wearing um, a shirt, with a blue turtleneck shirt and jeans. He has a watch, it's a really nice one, that was a gift from his boss, Eric. Mm, he had his coat, a long grey duffel coat, black pants in there. Uh, he would have taken that with him, it's not in the house. So, it was Friday evening, we had an argument, he left. On Saturday he didn't come back, I waited all day. He was supposed to go help Eric out with something on the Saturday afternoon, they had a job, but he didn't show. So Eric was ringing on the phone. I checked at the Rock, that's our local. They said they'd seen him on the Friday night, but not since. He still wasn't back this morning, it just isn't like him at all. Still not back by dinner time. It's getting dark again. So I decided to come see you. His parents haven't heard anything either. Yes, there's a car that we share of Cavalier and a van he uses for work. It's owned by Eric, but we look after it. Both of them are there now, parked on the street. I'm not sure about the keys for the van. I can look for you when I get back. Yes, that would be in his wallet. It's a visa, a silver one. He doesn't like to spend money he doesn't have, so he usually pays with cash, but Eric convinced him to get one. Well, Eric was like an uncle to him. They were pretty close. They spend a lot of time with each other, especially when they have to go to conferences. Have you met his wife, Diane? Diane is really nice. She helps out with the glaziers, organises the Christmas party, that sort of thing. They have two kids, really sweet kids. She used to look out for me when I worked there. Yeah, that's Simon's watch. It was a gift from Eric. He got it this year. It was a wedding anniversary gift. Steel. It would have been Diane who chose it. She has really nice taste. That time. You must eliminate me. I was in Glasgow then. Not really. He would go to the pub. He had his drinking buddies there, but no one ever really came back to the house. Sometimes Eric, his boss, and his wife would come over for dinner. That would be us returning the favour. Diane is a really good cook, into her trendy ingredients. And the last time Simon cooked something off Master Chef, he got the recipe off Seafax. And I did my Lloyd Grossman bit, commenting from the sidelines. 
I had to find fennel from the supermarket. Have you ever eaten fennel? Salmon and Eric arguing? No, I can't imagine they'd be arguing. And they get on so well. Unless it was something to do with work. Maybe Simon was being too much of a perfectionist. But I don't know. Who should ask Diane? I guess you could call it that, but we were both, both happy to get married. It was a beautiful wedding. <laughs> we had our first dance to come back and stay. I'm not sure if that's a good wedding song, but I loved it. I chose it. I mean, it was genuinely our first dance. We'd never danced together before. It was probably awful to watch, but I enjoyed it. It felt like it was just me and Simon for that moment. Just the two of us. It happened very quickly. We hardly had to talk to each other. We agreed almost silently. The baby was what mattered. We'd help each other. We cleaned up. We bagged up the broken mirror, her clothes. They're gone. We took him down to the cellar. We knew I, we had an alibi and we wanted the body to be found later. We wanted to have suspicion on us so we could then disprove it, rather than have it longer. Better to keep the body in the house than risk being seen with it. The watch, that was my touch, to make sure the alibi stuck. It happened very quickly. We hardly had to talk to each other. We agreed almost silently. The baby was what mattered. We'd help each other. We spent the wedding night in a hotel in Brighton. It would have been too much to do more. We were saving for the baby. It was wonderful to be in a hotel, away from home, just alone together. Since then, we've always tried to get away for our holiday. We couldn't afford our own place. Simon dropped out of school, went full-time at the Glaziers. That was Eric's generosity. We moved in with his mum and dad. They had a spare room for us and the baby, if it came. It was a nice change, time to myself, living there for those months of hope. No. I lost the baby. I had a miscarriage at eight months. We carried on living at Simon's parents until that was only a few months after. It was after dinner. I had spoken to Simon's parents on the phone. I looked up for an early night and I suddenly had this thought. I think it was something his mum had said. She'd been speaking about old stuff, sad stuff, about when we lived there, about the baby. There's some boxes in the cellar, nursery stuff, stuff we never needed. And I never had the heart to throw out. And I suddenly remembered that when I'd looked down there the week before, those boxes, that pile, was in the wrong place. I went cold all over. I went down there with a torch and went straight to the back. And that's when I saw the bin bags. Pulled them open saw the body. I screamed and 
That's when I called the police. Yes. It was a shock to him. I mean, he never thought it was possible. I don't know what he... I mean, I hadn't decided whether to keep the baby. I wasn't really ready to talk to him about it. It wasn't the presence so much. It was one of those arguments that had been simmering for a while. The present was a mirror, a nice mirror. He didn't wear the glass, the kind of mirror a princess would have in a story. He made it specially for me. The mirror. I can't remember. I put it somewhere safe. Upstairs, I think. I haven't looked at it since. Silver leaf? No. He normally silvers them properly. This mirror, it's supposed to look antique. The reflection isn't as good. It's the perfect mirror for someone who doesn't like to look at their own reflection. It happened very quickly. We hardly had to talk to each other. We agreed almost silently. The baby was what mattered. We'd help each other. We cleaned up. We bagged up the broken mirror, her clothes. They're gone. We took him down to the cellar. We knew I... Thing was wrong. The bags, I, I think they were from our kitchen, you can probably check that. We never go into the cellar, it's just a place we put things we don't need. My dad used to grow mushrooms there. The, the bags were taped up, I think it was parcel tape, but I think it was ours. Well, fine, considering. I got back into the house today, and that was weird, knowing your people have been there through my things. It's like I've been burgled. I mean, worse, obviously. I don't know. I haven't lived in the cellar yet. They sent a cleaner in, as good as new, he said. But they had to throw some stuff out could have get the blood out. And I'm still waiting to hear from the coroner so we can get a date set for the funeral. It's going to be a cremation. So. <laughs> yes, it was a cremation the best. We both wore black and had bales, so it was easy. And after the funeral, everyone came back to the house. I had served up sandwiches. And I stayed out of sight. Two 
sisters came walking by the sea. Oh, the wind and the wind. The eldest one pushed the other one in. Oh, the dreadful wind and the dream. So they're both out of love for the captain's son. Oh, the wind and the rain But he only cared for the youngest one All oh, that dreadful wind Oh, the eldest envied her sister fair Oh, the wind and the rain With her pretty little face and her long, long hair Oh, the dreadful wind and rain When she went home, Sam had a birthday tea waiting. Afterwards, she told Simon about me, told him I was pregnant. She wanted me to move in with them, this sister he didn't know she had. She knew that instant. The look on his face. She sent him out of the house, kicked him out, called me up, crying, and I went round. I guess I had a feeling I could hear something was wrong in her voice, but I wasn't sure what it was. She called me sister on the phone. She never calls me that. My sister is gone. And she's never coming back. Yeah, when I was at school, I worked part time in the front shop. It was sort of an extended family thing. My dad used to work there, my mum worked there before I was born. Oh, I took care of paperwork, filing, typing out invoices, that kind of thing. It was a good job for a girl back then. I didn't work a till or anything, but I was quite shy, so I wouldn't have liked to have worked a till. No, um, I was 15, Carl was older. 17, I think. I was really into him, regardless of how he actually behaved. Lots of drunken teenage sex. We did it in a church once. It's stupid. So he got tired of us and we split up after about six months. It was sad, but those early experiences, they help you realise who's really important to you, you know? Family. Mm -hmm. 
family. So Carl fucked off, and then there were other boys here and there, and then Simon. Florence was a warm, kind person. But she was broken, I guess. When I found her diary, I also found a biscuit tin with other stuff in it. All the papers, letters, that kind of thing. Her story was in there. I never really spoke to her about it. I was far too young to really understand. I guess I just put it together later, once I was older. She had loved children, planned to have a large family, but her husband died in the war. And that was back when you married for life. She never felt like she could marry again. Isn't that strange? She was a widow from her twenties. But I mean, I guess it was different then. You know, you married for life and she felt she could never marry again. I guess it was harder, a war widow. One of the dead. I, I don't know, maybe there was more to it than that. I don't really know. No, it was just me and her. It was the name they were going to call their first child. They talked about it and were going to try when it came back. Florence's family had a history of first-born girls, so they were convinced it was going to be a girl. It's hard to know if this is all true. These are stories I remember that I read when I was a child. Maybe I misread, maybe I misunderstood. Sometimes it's hard to remember what happened last week. Across the road, when my parents first lived there, was a midwife called Florence. When Hannah was born, I was born at the same time. The midwife was there to help. I'd been throttled by the cord, probably wrapped around my neck by Hannah. The midwife told my mother I was dead. But I wasn't. She wrote all this stuff in a diary. Amazing what people will admit to on paper. Florence took me home with her. Mother hadn't been expecting twins and had a healthy baby. I guess she was just happy for Florence to clean up. Take away the evidence that this was anything but a happy occasion. Florence raised me in her home. I never left it. She kept me out of sight. It wasn't odd for people to see a midwife with a baby, carrying in supplies, washing nappies, that sort of thing. I never knew any different. I grew up looking out of my window and seeing her across the road. I thought it was like a reflection in the mirror. She was me. princes and princesses. They were the special people, more important than the other characters in their stories. 
we knew we were like that. Twins. Magical. We were the princesses. We had a poster of Princess Diana from the newspaper up in our attic. Had a pride of place. And underneath we used to put all our special things. When her engagement was announced, we were obsessed with everything she did. And later, when her life went so bad, we felt for her. Her divorce last year just kind of drew a line under things. 